Well, welcome to What Yacht To Do. We spent a great week here in Gananaque, Ontario. We were right at the pump out, which has its pluses and minuses. It's shorter to walk to town and to the marina office and the restrooms and the showers, but there's a lot of traffic. We did get to meet a lot of people though, but the main thing is there's two big lights that come on at uh, dusk and they draw bugs. So be careful. Maybe that was a what not to do. In any case, we are going to get going today and we don't know if we're going to anchor or head to a marina. So come along with us and find out. All right, looking real good. Do you need me in the front? Yeah. He's using the th thrusters and trying to go straight off the wall. That's our plan anyway, because got all these boats behind us. Docked, no big deal. We are leaving Gananakwe Municipal Marina, where we have been a week. One long, glorious week. It was fantastic. We happen to celebrate our 27th anniversary here, so it will always hold a special place in our hearts. Looking good, Sam. Angle toward the starboard side. Keep going. There's a lot, as you know, of grass underneath the surface. But yeah, keep angling over to that to that right side. Um, you're coming close to this this fairway that goes through to the back slips. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to pivot right over and to the right here. Do you have the depth alarm set for what? Four? Oh, yeah, because there's props. Got it. Beautiful. How's the front looking? Do you need me to go up there? All right, you're, you're uh, spinning up dirt back here. So you made it. Back looks great. Yeah, you're perfect. No big deal. Although, I never like seeing the dirt churn up like that in the back. Kind of scary. But there was our home for the last seven nights. So there's not a lot we can do other than follow our breadcrumbs because it's pretty tight space. Coming back on the back side of the marina over here on the opposite side of the pump out. And it, was, it wasn't even too smelly. I uh, expected the worst, but it was a very pleasant stay. This is the beauty of the Thousand Islands, and I know this camera shot is not going to do it justice. You're just going to have to come here <laughs> and see it for yourself. But there are beautiful homes around, and then, as you would guess, there are little islands everywhere. Some of those islands have cottages on them, and some don't, but it is just a beautiful, beautiful area, the Thousand Islands. I'm not sure what the deal is with all this traffic today. It is Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I understand the dredge, uh, he is working. And I guess uh, it's summertime, so those two boats are playing. to pass these two guys here. And all right. We have not been able to raise them on the radio. No name on either boat. Let's just go for it. Why don't you uh, push it up here? I've tried calling them, saying uh, westbound cruisers of being the Trident Yacht Club. That didn't work. So uh, they are obviously. You gonna honk your horn? Yeah. All right. Give them a uh, a two whistle here. Yeah, 
I saw them at the at the poop. What do you call that? The poop deck. <laughs> the, um, pump the pump out. Thank you. That's right. Goodness, check out this cottage over here. Well, we're underway and we passed a couple boats along the way, so no traffic ahead of us and we're just kind of cruising here at economical cruise. The way it looks today is kind of not really half on going all the way to Belleville, so uh, we're probably going to pick an anchorage unless things change here. But as uh, I'm cross-checking my routes, I come across this. Uh, for some reason, this is why you have to cross-check it, is... Well, I'm sure the boat can go through here, but why, okay? Um, I'm going to move these points over here because, hey, I'd rather not have to go through that channel. It might be scenic, and I'm sure we could go through there. However, I'm just going to go on the open part here. So really double check your routes that are planned. Now this is an automatic route that I planned on avionics. And uh, last night I had a lot of things to do and I go, I'll check it along the way. Um, so check it, make sure you're checking it, whether you check it, you know, the night before, the morning of, or give yourself some time on some of these long straight stretches that you're going to have to check that route to make sure it's going to take you where you want to go. In this case, hey, it's not going to save us any time going through that area and we may have to actually slow down. So uh, it's probably faster and safer to go the other way. Well, we're moving along here and we're going to be coming up on our starboard side, the port of Kingston where we stayed about a month ago as we got set up for the uh, Rideau Canal and there's a lot of traffic I'm watching ferries go back and forth I can see them visually one's a couple hundred feet long big one out there so uh, car ferries going back and forth so another good reason um, not to take that little shortcut through there and you can kind of pan around up here. You can see Cedar Island and Whiskey Island and then the mainland here. There's enough room to get through it, but with traffic and ferries, um, I don't know why we would do that. Because it's just as short this way. In fact, it's a little bit shorter. The fact that you don't have to do the maneuvering around the island. One of my favorite things on the boat is called this squid cup and it has little suction cups on it and it's got a magnet on it so I can put this here and it just got a magnet on it now one of the things that you'll be careful of in your in your boat is you've got magnetic compass you don't want to get a magnet any clo anywhere close to that in fact just leaning up here, watch what happens to this. I get that magnet, look at that. Okay. Now the boat obviously is not steering off of that particular compass. It's using GPS data to be able to steer off the autopilot. But don't get anything magnetic in this area. In fact, at one time this boat was built, I'm sure the Sirius XM wasn't in here. And every time you add a piece of equipment on or around near the compass, it could affect the compass. So those of you who have taken the captain course understand, uh, well, you've got deviation that will happen and corrections to your compass card. And those things can affect it. So just keep anything metal, and particularly a magnet, away from your Compass. Today is a great day to learn how to sail. What? <laughs> oh no! I feel like I've gotten really close to you. going over. Well, an update here on our trip from where were we? 
Kananakwe, yeah, Ontario, and Lake Ontario this way. We crossed there a couple six weeks ago in Kingston. A lot of uh, wind on this island out here, Amherst Island. And over here you can see a chain of islands called the Brothers Island. Which I looked up an anchorage in there. Boy, if you're going to anchor in there, you'd be pretty exposed. But anyway, people do anchor in there. It's been taken over by a colony of cormorants. And they are um, those birds that you see, uh, black birds. They dive, they eat fish, and they said it's totally infested with them. And I've seen the cormorants going back and forth here, just just tons and tons of them. So we are coming up on, uh, as we round the corner here of our brother's island and turn to the port, we'll be in what is called the Adolphus Reach, R-E-A-C-H, Reach is a term for a long stretch or arm of uh, a lake or a sea. So uh, we'll, I think it's probably about uh, 20, 20 miles long, so an uninterrupted stretch of uh, straight course that we'll take as we come up here. We've got a sailboat off to the starboard side, really no traffic here, and I'm thinking as we get in here, we'll take a look at it and see if it's uh, amenable to putting the here's to up on plane. I'm still going through my mind as to whether we're going to anchor or we're going to try to make it to Belleville. So oh, yeah? We're gonna yeah, we'll take a look at it. Whether it's good for either one, it's just a matter of the crew preference here. And if we do get into Belleville, it's going to be six o'clock or so. Anyway, we'll see whether we just call it a night here and anchor. Looks like it's going to be good. Picking an anchorage uh, with uh, getting a good wind forecast for what it's going to be west southwesterly winds turning to southwest, so I've selected an anchorage that would be good for that, for protection. Really no more than about, uh, oh, I would say uh, seven miles per hour, maybe dropping off to about five miles per hour over the night, just out of the southwest, so it's pretty good holding there. I've looked up the anchorage. And I also saw a, uh, a boat um, on marine traffic that was anchored there the other day, so it looks like it would be a pretty good place to anchor. But we'll decide that in a little bit. So we all will also be going by the town of Bath, um, and Bath is a Loyalist Cove Marina where we entered Canada on our very first loop in 2019. Well, we've got two beautiful sailboats, a beautiful bridge construction going on on the bridge. The traffic keeps stopping up there. There is a light on the top, but we are down below, so having a beautiful day out on the water. You know, I really thought, well, I hadn't looked at the map very closely. I thought it was going to be, we are on the edge of Lake Ontario. Look at that. But this is more like the ICW. We've got land on both sides of us and uh, feel very safe and secure. So we're about a mile out. Here's the marina, Paul Myers Pier Marina. We've got docking instructions and hopefully they'll match up with what uh, they got there. So. Myers Pier Marina, Myers Pier Marina, motor vessel, here's to us. Vessel calling Myers Pier, this is Myers Pier, go ahead. Yes, uh, this is the motor vessel, here's to us. Uh, we're coming into uh, Alpha 10, going to be a stern in with a starboard tie confirmed. That is correct, over. All right, uh, if you have somebody, uh, we can get the hand at the, uh, at the dock for about, uh, Okay, yeah, we'll have uh, hands ready to help you over. Thank you very much. Okay, well, that went smooth. Well, thanks for coming along with us today on this long trip from Gananakwe over to Belleville. Belleville. <laughs> on 
honestly I couldn't remember. Instead of leaving at 7 o'clock this morning, we left at 9.30. So it felt like we were running to catch up with the day. Yeah, we uh, elected, once we got to where the anchorage was, it was going to be like 1.30 or two o'clock and I said, yeah. hey, you know what? It's another it's three hours. Early. Let's just go. And Yes, so instead of because anchoring I'm living with Marina Girl here. <laughs> I don't mean to be. It's just summer and it's hot and uh, But I will tell you this one thing is that we had a slip for a fifty amp power fifty foot boat and we are in a Rev, you'll take a picture of this and show it, but we are in a uh, slip for a 40 foot boat, a uh, 42 foot boat. We're hanging out. They said it's okay. And we only have a 30 amps of power, which is enough for two air conditioners. We'll just have to That's manage enough. the power. But okay. uh, I guess tomorrow they're going to move us. We've got winds right on the nose here, so it was a little challenge to get in, but um, here we are. I think. Uh, we woke up the people next to us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, boating, sometimes you're the show, sometimes you watch the show, but and Sam, I, yeah. he did great. And, and mostly here, I'm looking, you know, there's like uh, 40 foot, 42 footers in there looking at, hey, is this big 50 foot thing, what's that doing coming in here? So, but it wasn't bad, only about uh, six miles per hour wind. And uh, kind of a pushing us into the slip, so we just kind of take it easy and uh, take it slow, act like a pro. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and let's... you know what happens if you go fast? You're like, uh... this is a family show. Okay. I don't know All what right. you're fixing to say, but anyway, thanks. We'll see you next time on What Yacht to Do. All right, bye.